You are welcome to another video of Juniper Jonas Associate course. In this video, I will talk about dynamic routing protocols fundamental, which makes devices to learn and update routing information dynamically. I will compare different types of dynamic routing protocols like distance vector and link state protocols. And as a sample, I will configure a simple OSPF link state protocol. To be able to forward a traffic in a network to a destination, then all routers in the past must know the route to the destination. When a router does not know the route to the destination, it will discard the traffic. In large networks, it's difficult to manually configure the routes to each destination, but that's not the only problem. A bigger problem is that if a link in the network goes down, you have to update every route through that link to a different path. In this figure, both routers R1 and R2 already know the route to the destination network connected to themselves. For example, router R1 already know the route to the destination 172.16.1, and 20.20.20, which are connected to the router R1 but they also must know the route to the loopback address of another router. In other words, router R1 must know the route to the destination 172.16.2 connected to the router R2. And router R2 must also know the route to the destination 172.16.1 connected to the router R1. Both router R1 and router R2 have a primary route and also a secondary route to the loopback connected to another router for the time that primary route fails. However, it can be difficult to aesthetically update these routes every time a link goes down and comes back again. In dynamic routing, not only the routes are learned dynamically, the best routing information are learn dynamically in all routers, but whenever a link fails or comes back again, the routing information will be updated also dynamically, and we don't need to manually update any routing information. To have an overview of different routing protocols, there are two types of dynamic routing protocols, IGP and EGP. One typically used between autonomous system known as EGP or external gateway protocol. The only protocol currently used between autonomous systems and over internet is BGP protocol. The other type is used inside autonomous system known as IGP or interior gateway protocol. We have two types of IGP routing protocol. One type updates routing information based on distance vector algorithm. And the most well-known routing protocol in this category is RIP, which is deprecated and no longer used. The other type is used based on link state algorithm. The most well-known routing protocol in this category is OSPF and also ISIS both of which are well known and widely used. I believe that's difficult to understand the difference between distance vector and link state algorithm fully if you don't have enough experience working with them. But just to have an overview, in distance routing protocol, every router advertise the routes to its connected subness to the neighbor routers. Then neighbor routers know also the routes to the, those networks. Neighbor routers also advertise land routes to their own neighbors and so on. In this way, all routers in the network learn the routes to every subnet in the network. In a link state routing protocol, the topology of connected links and also IP information are advertised 
to all routers in the network throughout neighbor routers in a way that every router knows the complete topology of the network then each router calculate the best route to every subnet with the help of graph digestra algorithm locally in the router itself also these informations are not enough to understand the details concept of distance vector and link state routing protocol but i don't want to make you confused with the theoretical concept of these protocols but in this section i will implement a simple ospf protocol to see the advantage of dynamic routing protocol this is the topology that we have prepared in the previous sections two virtual SRX virtual SRX1 and virtual SRX2 are connected to each other through interfaces Giga Ethernet 000 and Giga Ethernet 001 with the IP subnet 101010 and 202020 each virtual SRX has a loopback interface with the address 172.16.1 and two in virtual SX2 which cannot see each other until the routing between these two routers are correctly configured all interfaces are in trust zone and therefore there is no need to configure any policy to permit the traffic between interfaces just to review the current configuration show configuration display set and then grep interfaces as you see giga ethernet 000 giga ethernet 001 they are already configured with the ip address 10 10 10 1 and 20 20 21 and also loopback interface with the ip address of 172 16 1 in the router virtual srx 1 the all interfaces are in trust zone so there is no need to configure any policy to permit traffic between interfaces this is also true in virtual SRX2 but let me delete the aesthetic route that we have already configured in the previous sections with the command show configuration display set and then grep routing delete routing information 000 and then show compare and then commit and also we will delete a static route in virtual sx2 run show configuration display set and grep routing and then delete routing option 172.16.1 and slash 24 and then show compare to make sure that the static rows are deleted and then commit we are going to run dynamic OSPF routing protocol between these two virtual SIX routers to do that we enable OSPF in all three interfaces Giga Ethernet 0, 1 and loopback interface and in the area 0 we have to also enable OSPF as a host inbound traffic to be permitted we have not talked about the topic area in OSPF routing protocol yet but don't worry it will not affect our discussion so with the command I've already prepared the commands here. We configure Giga Ethernet 0, Giga Ethernet 1, and loopback interface in the OSPF area 0. And we will enable host inbound traffic OSPF in both Giga Ethernet 0 and Giga Ethernet 1 in both Virtual SRX 1 and Virtual SRX 2. Copy and then paste. Copy and then paste. When the OSPF is configured, it is expected that the neighbor routers can detect each other. You can check the neighbor routers with the command show OSPF neighbors, run show OSPF neighbor in operational mode. As you can see, virtual SRX2 
No one wrote it as a neighbor with the, with the idea of 172, 16, 1, 1. But through two interface, gigaton at 0 and gigaton at 1 with the IP address of 10, 10, 10, 1 and 20, 20, 20, 1. This is also true in other routers. Run show OSPF neighbors. The same, you get the same output you can see in the virtual SIX router one. Now it is expected that the two routes for the destination loopback interface of the other router are created through gigaton zero and one in the routing table. You can check the routing table and routes learn through OSPF with the command show route but for protocol OSPF in operational mode as you can see 172.16.2 the loopback of virtual SIX2 is learned through OSPF and through two paths 10.10.10.2 giga ethernet 0 and 20.20.20.2 giga ethernet 1 as you can see, there are two routes to the loopback interface of other routers through once Giga Ethernet 0 and Giga Ethernet 1. With a checking forwarding table, you can make sure through which route the traffic will be forwarded. This can be done with the command show route forwarding table destination as we have learned in the previous sections in operational mode. So I will use a run command to use operational mode commands in configuration mode show route forwarding table destination 172.16.2.1 as you can see the traffic is forwarded through the second interface giga ethernet 1 and not giga ethernet 0 now we disable the interface giga ethernet 1 in one of two routers then it is expected the traffic will be dynamically rerouted to another interface with the command set interface giga ethernet 0, 0, 001 and then disable and then commit and we will use again the forwarding table command and as we can see the traffic is dynamically rerouted to giga ethernet 0 it was already in giga ethernet 1 but now it is in giga ethernet zero and if it is enabled again delete this command and again commit it's expected that the traffic will be rerouted again to giga ethernet zero let's check it as you can see the traffic mm, not yet now the traffic is dynamically rerouted to Giga Ethernet 1 again as it was before disabling Giga Ethernet 1 interface. This is the concept of dynamic routing protocol. Routing information are learned dynamically and when a link fails, the route will be automatically and dynamically changed in the forwarding table.